Welcome to the land of bourbon and bad decisions. This is the Relentless Daring Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Morgan, and here we are engaged in the relentless, daring pursuit of truth, justice, and American jackassery. I've got a good show lined up. We're going to uh, rehash the old argument I did from several episodes ago about corporate censorship, uh, speech codes at Colorado State University, MSNBC, and other sources pushing a story of Border Patrol kidnapping some children. Uh, look at uh, what the yeah child sex crime, how it's being affected by illegal immigrants in North Carolina. And last but not least, Donald Trump set the world on fire with a tweet. Shocker. But not for the reasons you think. It's actually a really good thing that worked out really well and completely blew my mind. But before we get into it, a uh, little housekeeping note. Podbean.com, who so graciously hosts this podcast and is home of the finest smelling podcasts in all the world. They are uh, getting ready to start a beta program for doing live streaming of podcasts. And which I have signed up. Uh, should be starting sometime next month. But if you go to go to my Twitter, either at you know on Twitter at Daring Podcast or my personal account at Real Tyler Morgan, go on there and let me know what, about what day of the week. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now the day of the week that works for me, Saturdays, and uh, what time if you wanted to listen to a live version of this show about when you would want to turn in. Uh, turn in, haha, tune in, and then whenever I'm able to start working on that, uh, I will gladly tweet out the deets on it. So, yeah, it's just something exciting going off the potentially with the podcast. So, all right, let's get into it. All right, so earlier this week, Colorado State University put out their new speech codes for uh, the upcoming school year, and they want to be more inclusive. Let's not offend anyone. Yes, yes. Well, according to, all right, so the article I'm reading, it comes from Breitbart.com, so take it with a grain of salt. You know, either way, if you are pro bright or if you're anti bright bart again just being up front that's where it comes from uh officials at colorado state university are urging students to avoid terms it labels offensive like america or and american uh reading from the article quote according to colorado state university's inclusive language guide students are advised to avoid the words america and american why exactly has the university deemed these words offensive? Ar the guide argues these words erase other cultures and depicts the United States as the domi dominant American country. Okay, so I'm breaking away from this. Okay, if they dispute that we are the dominant American country, how come Canada is not the leading power? On this continent. Why isn't Brazil. The leading country. The leading producer. The leading defender of the world. On this hemisphere. It's because. The United States. Is. The most dominant country. In the Americas. Period. End of story. Um. Uh, reading on the reading on uh, the guide which highlighted this week by campus reform asked students to replace America and American with US citizen or person from the US because that obviously changes who they are the guide contains a number of bizarre conclusions about language. For example, it advised students that using the label straight as a synonym for heterosexual because it allegedly implies those who are not straight are instead not normal or crooked. Well, 
again, diverting from the article. I don't see why this is a problem because in nature, homosexuality is an anomaly. I'm not saying it does not exist outside the human species. It has been documented in apes. It's been documented in dolphins. It's been documented in birds. However, the primary goal of anything that is alive is to make more copies of itself. To go out and, to quote from the Bible, to go forth and multiply. Did I just say multiply? Oh my gosh, am I tired? Wow. No, the, it's to go forth and multiply. To bear fruit, if you will. So, to assume that, you know, being straight is better than being gay is bad. I mean, I don't know. All I got to say is, you do you. If you are a religious person, anything that you do that is considered not in line with God's teaching, that's between you and God, and I am not going to judge you. I'm just making my observations based on what I understand of the world. But neither here nor there. But uh, it, it gets better uh, reading on. Uh this is actually pulled from the guide. Quote, this is not an official policy or required practice. This document is intended as a resource to help our campus community reflect our principles of community, particularly inclusion, respect, and social justice. The language in the guide may not apply to every individual, and it is critical to take personal preference into account. The guide is not about political correctness or policing grammar but rather helping communicators practice inclusive language and helping everyone on our campus feel welcomed, respected, and valued. End quote. It, they say in here, it's not the official policy and you're not going to get in trouble. But in the world of social justice, it's not a very big leap to go from this you know this university putting out what is the appropriate new speak if you will and then when people fail to use the appropriate new speak they will be browbeaten and browbeaten and browbeaten until yes either a they have been asked to not come back threatened with violence if they refuse to comply or they finally just comply because they have nothing else they can do. I'm sure Colorado State is a great university. I'm sure it turns out the finest teachers. I'm sure it turns out the finest engineers. Sure it turns out the finest Eastern European feminist literature majors known to man. But it comes to a point where, you know, you start policing how people speak. And this is a land grant university, meaning is a, not a, when I say a public university, I don't just mean it's open to the public. I mean, it is affiliated with a, with the state of Colorado. And it takes federal funding, yet they're restricting free speech. And the last time I checked, the federal government does not have the power to restrict free speech unless it involves a uh, shouting wolf in a movie theater. Or at least that's what Nancy Pelosi says. But you know, again, the, as we look at what's going on in society more and more, free speech is possibly the number one freedom that we have in this country that is coming under attack on a consistent, non-stop basis. 
I'm going to be doing another story here in a little bit about uh, the former teaching assistant from uh, from a Canadian university who was fired because she dared to show the students a debate that included Dr. Jordan Peterson. Oh, that hateful ass woman. I can't believe her. What? Ugh. So, so many soft-minded individuals were damaged by watching that this debate. Oh, wait, hold on a second. I'm, I'm taking the wrong side of this thing. Ah, I must be tired. I can't, I invented a new word because my mouth didn't work right, and then I just took the wrong side of that argument. But you know what I mean. When you cannot, you know, act in good faith, you cannot speak in good faith because everyone is has all has their panties so in a bunch that oh my gosh, that's that's totally that's totally not politically correct. You can't say that. Oh my goodness. Any, do these people even know where the phrase politically correct even came from? Last time I checked, it dealt with the Soviet Union. And if you use language that was not deemed correct by the Politburo or by the the commissar in your insert random industry, then you would go for re- re-education. So you did say language that was correct politically. I mean, that's what boils down to. And no one no one ever really stops to think about where some of this stuff comes from. You know, I was in Bible study earlier tonight, and we were talking about, you know, the origins of, you know, what's going on in the country right now. It's like, we're going to tax those people more to give these people what they don't didn't have before. That goes directly against, you know, the Ten Commandments. You know, thou shalt not covet. Think about it. Think about it. If you are part of the proletariat and you are just looking at the bourgeoisie and those stupid bourgeois and they have all this stuff and I don't and I want it, you're coveting. It's not good. Wow, that's a little bit of a rabbit, a little bit of a rabbit hole I went down, but um, get getting back on topic because when I digress, I digress with grandeur. But yeah, um, you know, finishing up uh, and going through this article, uh, one professor told her students. Be aware of the powerful and symbolic nature of language and use gender-sensitive formulations. Failure to use gender-sensitive language will impact your mark. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry, a normal person will not go out of their way to step on the toes of a person who is transgendered. A normal person will not go out of their way to be blatantly insulting to those whom they do not agree with. Note how I'm putting an emphasis on the phrase normal person because, you know, as life will show you, there is no such thing as normal. It is a completely relative term. And, and the same thing goes for a lot of the stuff in these speech codes where they demand that you have to talk a certain way, you can't use certain words, you have to refer to people, cert, you know, certain pronoun, blah, 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 blah. A normal person is going to look at someone who identifies as a different gender, and they will sympathize with them, and they will say, hey, if it makes you feel better to use the pronouns she or 
you know, use pronoun she, use pronoun he, use pro. Uh, okay, I almost stop at those two because I think you start getting the z, zim, zai, zu, zai, pi, pow, and all that crap. Now you're just making stuff up. Or if, well, I'm a two spirit, you need to refer to me as they or them. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not happening. You may have two people inside of you. That's between you and whomever you need to speak to on that issue, be it your pastor, be it your psychiatrist, be it your best friend. I don't know. It's between you and whoever. Not for me to decide. But as long as I'm talking to a single physical body, you are in a single sense. The singular sense. But, like I said, the average person, they're not going to be an absolute jerk over, well, oh my gosh, yesterday, that was Bob. Today, it's Roberta. I will still call, still call her, we'll still call him Bob. I mean, it's really easy on social media or anywhere else to, you know, I want to call this person by that, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if, if the person is reasonable, it's not that hard. Oh, oh, you're going by Roberta now? So I'm assuming she is the proper pronoun? I mean, it's... Like I said, average people will do that. They don't need the weight of a university administration. They don't need the weight of the federal government. I have a person, but, you know, then you have, you know, people like um, the transgendered woman at the Albuquerque GameStop. It's ma'am! I'll show you a sir. You you, You have people like that who use, like, no, you're being you're being a jack wagon. So I'm going to treat you as such because you're being a dick. Stop it. And no, no one wants to be the victim of verbal abuse, whether it's you accidentally called someone the wrong thing, or you know, and then they you know turn and yell at you. Nor if you make a good faith correction, you want someone to turn around and just, you know, intentionally, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm sorry, ma'am, 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 and just throw it in your face and make it incredibly uncomfortable so you don't want to go back there. It's understandable, but... Having any organization, be it your be it a local, state, or federal government, or a school, whether it be a public school, a private school, a public university, a private university. Oh my God! I don't know what just happened. Everything just died. Sorry about that. I dropped my phone, and everything just went haywire. My headphones died. The works. I hope this doesn't happen if I have the opportunity to make this go live. However, it could provide for some very entertaining, you know, internet radio for those of you listening. So maybe you do want me to do more stuff like that. It could be fun. But, <laughs> but no, nah, um, this, this growing push that all language has to be inclusive it's, I don't know. I, it's just ridiculous because, as I said, most people are good. Most people will have compassion. It's so like, no one dogs on Caitlyn. Okay, they do dog on Caitlyn Jenner for having been Bruce Jenner, but... Again, when... Bruce Jenner transitioned into Caitlyn Jenner. I remember 
my wife was really, really into uh, the Kardashians. And it would show Rob and Bruce Jenner's sons. Yes, I know I'm dead naming. Stop it. You know, they'd go out and do stuff. And I'm like, wow, he's really grown his hair out. Is he wearing lipstick? Huh. That's peculiar. So then when it came out that Bruce Jenner is transitioning to being Caitlyn Jenner, I honestly wasn't surprised. I remember looking at my wife going, huh, I, I, I bet he's trans and he's going to come out as a woman sometime in the near future. She's like, oh, stop it. You're being mean. I'm like, hey, I'm just making observations here. But then when how you, you know, you hear Caitlyn Jenner's story about how long she had had these feelings. And you, you can't help but feel compassion for someone who's felt like they've been stuck living a lie for that long. And oh, they said, normal people are compassionate and forced, compelled, heavily weighted if you do not follow its speech is something that is not needed in America and or on universities. Normal people will correct the dumb, stupid jerks who insist on being jerks. Getting back into it. Uh, this next segment is going to be kind of a double whammy because they both deal with uh, immigration and the crazy crap that the leftists say about it. You know, about, oh, well, those illegal aliens. They are so much more law-abiding than regular U.S. American citizens. And this, they say, it calls into question that narrative. Um, independent researcher in North Carolina, uh, James Johnson, with uh, ncfire.info, which NC Fire is North Carolinians for Immigration Reform and Enforcement. Uh, he, he's been looking into some numbers. Um, an article written for the Epoch Times um, to do in North Carolina, reading from the article, quote, in North Carolina during the past 18 months, more than 331 illegal aliens have been charged with 1,172 child rapes and child sexual assaults, according to data collected by an independent researcher, end quote. Wow. 11, over 1,100 by more than 330 individuals. That is ungodly. That's that's nearly a ratio of, uh, I want to say four to one, but I don't want to do some random math. But it's it's well, it's definitely at least it's definitely around three or so to one. Because uh, I'm going to read further in the article here. Um, Quote, Johnson's tracked rapes and sexual assaults on children by illegal aliens since 2013, using original police reports and calling arresting agencies to verify immigration status. His data doesn't cover every month, but for the 54 months he has recorded, an average of 34 illegal aliens per month were charged with 151 counts of raping or sexually assaulting a child in North Carolina. End quote. I mean... I'm not going to be one of these catastrophists who come out and say, oh, they're all bad. I'm sure they're not. But, you know, this goes back to when the press was saying that Donald Trump called all, all these, all these undocumented migrants, you know, rapists and murderers. No, he did not. If you go back and read, read the transcript or listen to the speech 
he said that they he said the rapists and murderers were coming over the border with regular I'm just trying to provide a better life for my family and it will do what I have to to accomplish that illegal aliens but you know it's ridiculous though that there are numbers that much average you know with average numbers being approximately you know five crimes committed by you know per one illegal that's that's an ungodly number and this is a big reason on why we need to make sure we have a secure border know who's coming in and we cannot go safe we cannot go ah well you know he messed up and yeah we're we're not going to uh, hand him over to ice even though they gave us a, a sent us a detainer because we arrested him on on this so well yeah we'll we'll send we'll send them on their merry way as soon as we can I and mean, that's a ridiculous attitude to have you know reading some of these in may uh, jeremias rafael de leon sales that's a mouthful i uh, was arrested in hanover county charged with statutory rape of a four to six year old child no Okay, statutory, statutory rape, that's like a, such a huge downplay because, you know, you have these Romeo and Juliet crimes where, you know, the 19-year-old, you know, boy has the 16, 17-year-old girlfriend. She gets knocked up, parents get mad and go, oh, he's over 18? Well, you're not the age of consent for our state, whether, whether you consent it or not. Statutory rape. Four to six years old? <laughs> that is not statutory, my friends. That is straight up forcible rape. And the fact that they would downplay that charge to a statutory is ugh. Uh, it's gonna make me that's gonna make me throw up in the mouth a little bit. But it's ridiculous. Uh you know, Reyes Rivera Zapata was arrested and charged with first-degree kidnapping, two counts of first-degree statutory sex offense, and two counts of indecent liberties with a child. And and these list goes on and on and on. But you try bringing up uh, rates of crime like this, and no one wants to listen because, oh, you're just... You're just trying to categorize all all these people who are just coming here from you know, these horrible, horrible situations just to make, make everyone look like bad guys because that's what you do. You're a hater McHaterton. <sighs> no, Karen, that's not why I do it. I do it because the truth needs to be told. You have an entire segment of the population and North Carolina, if they're arrested in Durham or Raleigh or Salem they're sanctu they're big democrat liberal cities and they're just going to be sent on their merry way just like yep we got them oh i sent a detainer dang it they they just got out son of a gun sorry we just ah shucks we couldn't help you and it's just, it's ungodly that this happens. And I was hoping I'd get both both these stories in the uh, same segment, but we'll continue it right after this. Do you love what you hear on the Relentless Daring Podcast? Do you want to show the world your support for this podcast? This is Tyler from Relentless Daring, asking you to go to shop dot spreadshirt.com slash relentless daring and check out our merchandise there we have t-shirts hoodies hats coffee cups travel mugs go there check it out use it to show the world your love this podcast and as always stay relentless all right 
Sorry about that. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you're trying to trying to meet time hacks. You just got to stop what you're talking about. But um, if I just finish this up real quick. Uh, yeah, the person who started this uh, website, do, 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 James Johnson, he he goes on in this article to say that the biggest problem, again, like I said, is, you know, law enforcement who they may be in a, a sanctuary city where the local government says, uh, no, you're not dealing with ICE. Regardless of immigration status, you do not send that up. And once, you know, if they can make their bail, send them on their way. And that is horrible horrible situation for the victims because you know they may get charged they may be able to make their bail and then they just disappear because at that point you know what's absconding and lose losing your bail money going to you know going to do for you you know maybe your bail bondsman's not going to be too happy with you as they're chasing across the countryside to you know so they can get their get their money back from the courts, but you know, but you know, to you, jumping bail is not going to be that big of a crime if you're already looking at charges of, you know, lewd and lascivious acts with a child, or you know, rape or child molestation, what have you, and. You know, he said not only is it the, you know, James Johnson said not only was it, uh, you know, law enforcement who let these people go, but also local media. And and we've all seen those news stories where a man robbed a store. He was wearing, you know, black shoes, blue jeans, a, a purple and gold Louisiana State University hoodie. And a Louisiana State ball cap. And that's it. They don't tell you, was he white? Well, if he was white, they say he was a white man. But they don't tell you if he's a minority. And in a lot of these communities, these crimes are happening. And, oh, yeah, that kind of goes against the narrative. So we're just going to downplay that one. Going to pretend like it didn't happen. And... Because the media refuses to bring attention to it, it doesn't, you know, get the awareness out there for the, you know, citizens of those of that community, you know, to those who be who want justice, and it does a huge disservice to legal immigrants because, or even to, you know, those people who. Yes, they broke the law to come here illegally. But they're trying to live within the you know, the social the social order. You know, you'll have people who like, oh, my neighbor's my neighbor's little kid was a victim of one of these illegal aliens, and I know that person's illegal alien, and I'm not saying that all people would resort to violence, nor am I suggesting that anyone does. If you do resort to violence against your illegal alien neighbor, you are an idiot and you deserve any and all punishment that comes your way. But, you know, and so media doesn't highlight it. And it goes, and it just goes to let it continue. It allows it allows things like human trafficking to continue because no one wants to talk about, you know, the big ugly eyesore in the you know in the neighborhood. And in this case, the eyesore in North Carolina is child rape at the hands of illegal aliens, and it's just absolutely awful. And now that you know, speaking of media highlighting things, switching over here. MSNBC. <laughs> oh, you create or as a, I believe it was Mark Levin who I heard refer to it as LSD and NBC, because you have to be taking something mind altering to follow along with that tripe. 
And an article from Red State. Headline, MSNBC personalities dangerously, dangerously push fake story about CBP holding kids hostage at O'Hare Airport. Ooh, this is one that really is interesting because it's been, yeah, I'm going to say it's been everywhere. But it's been pushed by uh, Joyce Aileen. Now this, keep in mind, I am reading this from an article. It doesn't really say who she is, but you know she shared the story from wbez.org, and this this is a tweet from her. CBP is reportedly detaining three U.S. citizen children in Chicago to get their non-citizen parents to come forward. We need to know more about this. It sounds both illegal and precariously close to tactics fascist dictators used, if true. Or Rachel Maddow. Oh, I hate that guy. The, she tweeted, The girls are aged 9, 10, and 13. They are U.S. citizens. Customs and Border Protection has been holding them at O'Hare Airport since 3 a.m., Reports now show they were just released after protesters showed up at the terminal with signs, Let the children go. Well, not not quite what happened there. And I, oh, I got one I was talking about on. Do, 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 do. From Sarah Rayo. Think that's how you say her name? Uh, look at her on Twitter. Her, you know, she's she's a blue check, so she's real apparently. Uh, her profile is first generation Indian American, former congressional candidate for Colorado CD one, which means she lost. And author of upcoming broken news, co-founder of at Race Two D. I'm going. I'm going to assume it's race to Democrat, and I'm also going to assume that race is less about trying to get to a congressional seat, especially because she's from the second district, or from the first district, excuse me. But I'm going to assume that race in this context is, you know, skin tone, ethnicity, national origin. You know, that kind of race, as in race baiting. But you know, going into the story, I said I read you the accusations, and you know, I said this woman from Twitter who, you know, <clears throat> oh, pardon me, the, um, she also tweeted about something absolutely ridiculous, but. Neither here nor there, because I've already read the accusation, but it's also, it's more of this tripe that, oh my God, they kidnapped these children and they're just holding them. They're such big meanie heads. Oh my God. But if you go through what actually happened, uh, reading from the article, uh, children showed up at O'Hare Airport with an adult cousin. The adult cousin a Mexican citizen was found not eligible for entry. Now, this per you know, the American government, they're so amazing. They can give you a visa. All you have to use apply for a visa if they give it to you. And perhaps you did something to revoke eligibility. Yeah, you may still have a perfectly legal visa, but now you're not eligible to enter the United States. I don't know what this cousin did. Doesn't go into details. Just wasn't eligible for entry. Well, okay, so he can't enter. Yet, as it states in the article, there's a laundry list of reasons why someone might be found inadmissible and having a visa does not automatically get you through customs, nor does it even have a U.S. passport for that matter. Yes, you can. You can be... uh, Forced into, I guess, like exiled, I suppose. 
if you're a naturalized citizen and you leave the country, say, under a, you know, for a violating a federal law, and then you're convicted in absentia and they revoke your citizenship, yes, it's a thing. Hate hate tell the crazy people out there who don't believe me, but Ilan Omar could theoretically have her citizenship revoked and bye bye go back to Somalia. Uh, I'm not calling for that. I think that's rash. I think it's stupid, regardless of the absolute that comes out of her mouth. Uh, it seems on the daily, especially her wonderful, wonderful stance on Israelis and. Israel and Jews in general. But anyways, you know, once that cousin who was an adult was dis- was ruled to be inadmissible, CBP contacted the mother of the children because that's the right thing to do. It is required by law that she or another legal guardian come take custody of them. Because she is an illegal alien, She didn't want to go to the airport. So she spent the next 13 hours playing games. Note the old adage, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Uh, So she sent a lawyer down, down to the airport. Officials from the Mexican consulate showed up to try to take the children, but the rules are the rules. A parent has to pick them up. And in this case, she chose not to go pick them up. Yes, she was scared that she may be detained, but interior enforcement is not done by CBP. It is done by ICE. Yeah, maybe they would have gotten ICE officers to show up and haul her off and you know, frog walk her out of the airport. Who knows? I doubt it, though. But, you know, when she finally decided, okay, when they finally told her, no, we're not going to arrest you. Just come down and get your kids. They've been here all day. They want you. Come get them now. She finally showed up. But... It's uh, one of those wonderful, wonderful situations. It's all the news media, though. <gasps> oh, my gosh. They're so mean. They're going to deport her if she comes to get her kids. And that's what was getting reported pretty much all afternoon. You know, due to CBP actually tweeted... There are false reports circulating that CBP is detaining three U.S. citizen children at O'Hare. The children arrived with a Mexican citizen that was deemed inadmissible. By law, they could only be released to a parent slash legal guardian. The mother has picked them up without incident. Again, shenanigans. And it's being forced down our throat because of a narrative. And as has been stated many times before, either by me or someone else who is far smarter than me, you can't let the truth get in the way of a good narrative. All right, getting ready to close out on a high note. I said in the intro... Donald Trump issued a tweet that set the world on fire. But it was a good thing. Um, In this one, uh, as a Fox News story, uh, charity CEO Bill Polt, Trump Trump changed the reality of philanthropy with one tweet helping a combat vet. All right, so Polt Capital CEO Bill Polt, he, he made the argument today that President Trump changed the face of philanthropy. Knowing that he was able to raise thousands of dollars for veterans after the president retweeted him. So, uh, apparently uh, Bill Polt was uh, working on uh, something, a charity raised money for a, for a combat veteran. And, you know, Bill Polt tweeted... If 
real Donald Trump retweets this, I will give $30,000 to a veteran on Twitter. And there's a couple uh, people he added on that, Dan Scavino, someone else, but it was retweeted by Donald Trump. And in the process, a bunch of money came in, and he spent $20, and the charity spent $20, got a brand new car, and $10,000 cash for a female combat veteran and a single mom, which I'm sure he, Bill Polt, would have you know gotten some of a response from you know the regular people you know who may follow him on Twitter, but I don't, the fact that Donald Trump tweeted it, and there are people who hate Donald Trump who follow him and hang on every every word, waiting for the next. You know, they can go home or they can go to the countries they came from tweet, you know, to make him look like a horrible racist or next Kofefe tweet to make him look like a blithering idiot. You know, they follow him for all the wrong reasons. You have the Trump fans looking to either defend everything Donald Trump says or retweet everything Donald Trump says because Donald Trump is the new orange lord and savior of the world yeah i don't get it either but you know i will give this is actually a really cool thing where you know he tweeted out the you know tweeted out that response or that he retweeted you know bill polt and you know money people wanting to help out poured in and yeah, he was able to accomplish the goals that he wanted. He got her a car. And then he also, you know, she had $10,000 in cash, which, you know, if I was given a $20,000 car and $10,000 cash, that money I already know is going towards the sales tax because they're going to they're going to tax me as if I bought it and it was not gifted. But, I don't know, I think it's, I would love to see more and more stuff like this, where, which, I really don't know if I've really laid out my feelings on Donald Trump, because like any American president, I want him to be successful. How do you make, how are you a successful president? It's not getting certain policies through. It's not ending a war it's not saving a baby from a burning building as a president it's you go in there and regardless of it left or right when you leave that office america is stronger or america has at least you know not completely fallen off the rails and i think donald trump has done an okay job as president I'm not down with the whole tariff and trade war thing I think that's just going to hurt up you know wind up hurting us in the end I think at 3 o'clock in the morning when he's sitting on the toilet he needs to stay the hell off Twitter because nobody's brain functions well enough at 3 o'clock in the morning while they're sitting on sitting on their golden crapper to be able to make good clear and concise language or maybe Donald Trump is being clear and concise and what he tweets at three o'clock in the morning on the crapper is at best cringeworthy at worst reprehensible but I think if he were to you know retweet more charities more of these uh you know little challenges like hey if he retweets this we will do this. I think it'd go a really long way in building up that uh that social capital that that you know that goodwill amongst the American people that well yeah you know, maybe he's not so bad after all. But you know, then again, uh, the girl's father 
on History of the World Part 1 was sent to the French dungeon because he said the poor ain't so bad. But I digress. I just would love to see the president. Uh, stuff like this. Yeah, it's not the most presidential because he essentially lives on Twitter. And it's a great way to get his message out. I just wish he would do a little less tweeting. Or if he is going to be tweeting, retweet stuff like this. You know, one message to put a single mom with two kids into a car and $10,000 cash, she can either pay the taxes on the car with it or that's $10,000 that's food, that's clothing, that's, you know, new furniture, you know, whatever it takes, you know, to help raise her, you know, raise those kids of hers. And I think, you know, it's a Donald Trump retweeting anything where you're trying to do good is a great way to be able to do good. And I would love to see more of it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you again for, to the valued listeners who come back every week and listen to us. I'd really love to thank our listener in Australia, our new listener in Great Britain, our new listener in Ireland, and our wonderful, wonderful Canadian friend who is now listening to us as well. Thank you again for listening to some silly, crazy hillbilly in the middle of Missouri record a podcast discussing American politics. God bless you. Hopefully, I'm not turning you off to ever coming to America and visiting. I hope you actually want to come here and see the sights. Very, very beautiful country. My parents are currently on vacation in Wyoming, which if you've never been to Wyoming, please go check it out. The drive through Wind River Canyon in a semi loaded down with sheetrock is an absolutely amazingly fun time. But again, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. Uh, again, the podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify. And it's also available on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash Relentless Daring. And you can find it and you can listen to it there. There is no video. You do not get to see this fugly mug. But hey... One day, one day. And it can all be possible if you go to www.patreon.com slash Relentless Daring 1. I believe last week I just said Relentless Daring. It will not take you there. You have to have the number 1 at the end of it. Go to Relent- again, go to patreon.com slash Relentless Daring 1 and become a patron. I just got the secret Facebook page set up so we can share all of our favorite funny memes Preferably the dank and gross ones, but, you know, whatever you want to share, that's cool. I can live with it. Uh, I also, I do have a website. Right now, it's kind of still in that beta scene, and I don't have a simplified, do not have a simplified uh, URL for it yet. Hopefully soon. We'll have that going. And uh, that way, once I have it up and going, you can go, go there. You'll also be able to listen to podcasts there because I do have a player that gets the RSS feed. But again, thank you all for listening. Glad you can join me on this every week. And as always, stay relentless.